Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Hey, everybody. So glad you're joining us today. And thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed and is supporting the show. We really appreciate it. We certainly do. And so today we have a very interesting show. And uh, the cuteness level is going to go through the roof on this one. Just <laughs> warning you beforehand. So Yeah, so if you're listening on the podcast, you have to tune into the YouTube channel because, like Michael said, this one is super cute. Yeah, absolutely. So please introduce who we are interviewing today. Yeah, so this dog nerd was actually stumped. We visited a dog show and met this young lady named Isabel and her dog Martini. And Martini is a Legoto Romagnolo, which I I mean, how did I not know? Did, did I like forget that I knew about this breed or did I just not, not know? I had never heard of them and I don't call them that now because I can't pronounce that. So they're also known as the truffle dog. They're the only purebred dog that hunts truffles. I didn't know that. It was very interesting. Yeah, I think other purebred dogs hunt truffles, but I think these are the only ones that are, like, certified as a truffle hunter. Okay. So we'll get into the history and um, details after we uh, we meet Isabel and Martini. So let's... All right. I am here with Isabel and Martini, and Martini is... I've got to look at it. Say the name. Legoto Romagnolo. Legoto Romagnolo. And tell us about this dog. So they have actually kind of like a um, specialty. They are uh, they actually hunt for truffles, but they're originally um, water dogs. And you were telling me that they have webbed feet, right? Yes, ma'am. So they, they can they swim. Like, they're like ducks. They're they, practically they they their webbed feet are like ducks. That is so cool. And the coat is very soft. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And so you were telling me that you needed this particular type of dog because your dad has allergies? My dad, my sister, and me, we all have very bad allergies. And these dogs are hyperallergenic, and what that means is that they don't shed. And so there's no sneezing or no, anything like that? They actually kind of help my sister and my father and me. Yeah? They help. Yes, ma'am. And tell us, what is Martini like? I mean, Martini seems very she, laid back. She's very laid back, unless you get her really excited, like if you give her something. Yeah. She's she's really excited then, but she's she's more of a laid back. She's okay. Laid back. So she well, does she like to go outside and go hiking and stuff, or does yes, ma'am. She we've taken her outside a few time um, a lot, and we take them on trips and stuff and we go walking with them and they come with us everywhere practically. So very good doing a lot of activity but is she also good like hanging out on the sofa watching TV? Yes, <laughs> she sleeps with me all the time coming to shows and she's just a really laid back dog. And just so sweet. Yes ma'am. Um, so she doesn't shed? No ma'am. Um, let's see. Does she have any special things she likes to do? or She usually, we ha we got a very big fence outside our yard, and her and her sisters and stuff, they all go outside and play a lot and run. They're, yeah. She's really fast. Really fast? Yes, yeah. Is she the fastest one, you think? Yes, yeah. Yeah. And you are a junior handler, so yes, we yeah. just got to see you in the ring, yes, and yeah. you did very well. Thank you. Is she the only dog that you show? She, she's the only one I've showed in junior so far, but I have a lot of other dogs that I can show. Okay, yes, yeah. cool. I'm going to look at my list here. So, um, this is she full grown? Is that um, her full she, size? This is as big as they'll get. Okay. Yes, yeah. And how old is she? She is about a year and a half old. Okay. Now. Would you recommend this type of dog for yes, other yeah. people? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah? They're very good with children. They are? Yes, are they, and they're good with other dogs? Yes, ma'am. Does she ever find any truffles? Um, we don't live where truffles are, but yeah. she has, but the, whenever we got her, she was, she hunted truffles for a very long time. So, oh, yes. cool. Well, I just think she is so sweet, and so are you, and Thank I you. so appreciate you talking about this breed. Now, with the name, do they come from Italy? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is there anything else about the breed we should know? 
Mexican. Just a just a soft, sweet Italian dog. Yes, Sam. Right? Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, Sam. Cool. Oh my gosh. She is just adorable. Oh yeah, like a little princess, right? Yeah, and and Martini, I mean, just a sweet. I think because we have terriers, I, I'm like when there's a dog that's just kind of like so chill like that, I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, this dog is just so laid back. Now I have to say, uh, excuse the bad hair that I was having. Oh my gosh, I had, <laughs> I had a bad haircut where my bangs were cut way too short, and I was trying so hard to deal with it. So. Yeah, let's just look past that and thank goodness for, you know, hair growing back. Yeah, well, uh, speaking <laughs> of hair, uh, it was interesting to uh, note that this particular breed has hair and it doesn't shed. And that's good for people that uh, maybe have allergies. So it's, it's, a, it's a dog. If you have allergies, it's a dog to possibly put on your list. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I said, wow, this dog has such a soft coat. And Really, it's actually, like they describe in our research, kind of woolly. So, again, having coarse wire-haired terriers, when I touch any dog that doesn't have coarse hair, I think it's really soft because it's been 15 years, 16 years since I've had a Yorkie myself. So, I've, I've forgotten how soft and just, yeah, it, it is, like a, but like a soft woolly texture and very curly. So, what I learned in research was that you actually don't want to really – brush these guys too much because then you'll brush out the curl. So um, with grooming, they are recommended that if you're going to clipper them, say you're not going to have a show dog, that you clip them three to four times a year okay. or, or have yeah. them clipped. And then if you are going to brush them, use a slicker brush or comb for minimal brushing. Um, too long and they will get mats and then mats can really be uncomfortable. So you definitely want to be aware of that i would say for grooming it's a little more high maintenance dog um for grooming yeah because of that yeah I, I would say so but on the flip side of that you're saving time on having to sweep up uh yeah. your your third <laughs> dog or your second dog if you will yeah so um one of the reasons for their coat that i thought was interesting was they were originally bred to be water dogs and there's some people that will say that they're the original water dog. Yeah, so like a lot of people in canine history say that this is the water dog from which all other water dogs came from. So yeah, that's the poodle, the lab, uh, the golden Portuguese all, water yeah, dog. Yeah, exactly. And they're also they're often confused. I didn't know this that, uh, with the Portuguese water dog. They're yeah. very similar looking, but, but they're different. much smaller. And yeah. Um, uh, the one lady that we saw giving an interview said that a lot of people when she was. British, so maybe this happens more over there, but they said, uh, get used to people asking about your cockapoo because uh, people think it's a, a mixed breed, but it is not. No. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a very um, interesting looking dog. If you're, if you're not, uh, if you're listening on the podcast and it, it does kind of remind me of a poodle to a little, uh, I, it, I, it reminds me of an uncut poodle than more than it does the Portuguese water dog. It's much more square and sturdy, though. Yeah. They they, ha they say it has a more square body and a rustic look. So it's definitely, like, I can see that dog working out either in, you know, truffle hunting or, mm -hmm. um, you know, even uh, in the water. So another interesting thing that, um, you know, they, they will find water. They will seek it out and find it. They and smell it, don't they? Get muddy and... I don't know if they uh, they must because they have such good noses, but um, yeah. they'll seek out water. If so, so you know, make sure that if you do decide on this breed, that you know you're you're ready for a dog that wants to be in the water because it seems like they gravitate to it. Like, yeah, like me. I love the water. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, they have extremely good noses, and um, let's see. Oh, they still have pretty good instincts for retrieving. And, of course, swimming. So, you know, that retriever apparently is still in them. And it's an ancient breed. I mean, the Legoto Romagnolo, I think what we found in our research is that Legoto means, like, lake dog. And mm -hmm. then Romagnolo refers to the area of Italy from which they came. So, very interesting. Um, personality. They are more reserved, which we saw in that interview. Um, they can be aloof, but Martini was not aloof with me. She wasn't no. overly exuberant, but she was very friendly. So, um, 
you know, it, it's important that you socialize them with people and other dogs when they're puppies because they can be a little aloof. Um, many of them don't like people or dogs in their space. So it seems like they don't have to be around the action all the time, that they're good alone or with people. And again, if socialized, you know, that's that's a big component for any any dog, no matter what the breed. Um, so socialize those puppies. And uh, we did find that they are barkers. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, know that they're not incessant barkers, but they will bark. And um, once they are bonded to you, they are very attached. So yeah. kind of like most dogs, right? I know. Yeah, exactly. And I know one of the um, people that we were doing our research on said that these dogs are extremely smart. And you almost have to be one step ahead of them. Oh, yeah. Like almost manipulative. Yeah. So, so it's very important when they're young to start training them. They yes. need to be, they need to be trained uh, because if left to their own devices, they will do what they want to. And they're so smart that they'll figure out a way to do what they want. To. And we'll link to that lady's video because she was, I, I believe a breeder and mm -hmm. she was very informative. She's in the UK and um, she, yeah, she said that they're clever, but they can be manipulative um, so that is something to be aware of. And she said that they, she would not recommend them for a first time dog owner that I could see that they, you know, they can work for a first time dog owner, but you have, I mean, we know you've got to, you've got to know how to train and socialize. And I think that's where that, that manipulation and cleverness comes in that you, you know, you can't be like, Oh, this sweet little dog can do whatever uh, it wants. Cause it'll get away with whatever you let it, yeah, you know, it'll most. manipulate you right into the, to the poor house probably. <laughs> so, um, exercise, they need about 45 to 50 minutes of physical exercise a day. That can be hiking. It can be running around in the yard. Swimming of course is great exercise. They also need mental stimulation. So let them work those noses. Try, you know, hide and seek with food. Since yeah. they are food motivated and have great noses, that's a great option for this dog. That is yeah, that's true. And that and that goes for I know I always say this, but that goes for a lot of dogs. So make sure you're you're putting puzzles out for your dog, whether it's hiding food or there are some commercial puzzles you can purchase. Make sure you're doing that too. I mean it's one thing to walk them or let them run around in the backyard, but they need that they need that stimulation too. And especially a dog as smart as this. They definitely need it. Yeah, and apparently these guys will dig and they do often get their paws muddy. So if you're a neat freak, you know, you're gonna have to learn how to deal with that. Get a carpet cleaner. <laughs> yeah, or tile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one or the other. Um, so we've talked about their intellect. Um, let me see. Let me check my notes to see if there's anything else we need to cover. Um, Let's yeah. talk about some of their health issues. So, Well, before we get into that, I do want to just reiterate what Isabel said. They don't shed, and they are great with peop great for people with allergies. Mm -hmm. So if you, know, you are one of those people, like Michael said, put this dog on your list. Do your research. Find, find somebody local that has this breed and, and meet them and, and see what you think and get find out from them. Um, but yeah, the health. So whenever we talk about these dog breeds, we talk about where you get your dogs from. So of course, rescue is number one on our list. And, you know, with this being a, a rare breed or not as popular breed, it may be hard to find a dog like this at the rescue. So I was looking through um, the Legoto Romagnolo uh, Club of America page, mm -hmm. and I didn't find anything on rescue on their page. So I'm not sure that there is even a rescue group for this breed, and that might just be because it is not very popular. So um, we have found with our dogs that since they're not a popular breed that they've been a pretty healthy breed, thankfully. Mm -hmm. And um, it seems to be the case with this breed. Um, they do test for juvenile epilepsy and hip dysplasia, Make sure that you, first of all, find a reputable breeder. So if you yep. can't find a rescue and you do want a puppy, find a reputable breeder. Do your research, find out what kind of testing they do, and make sure that they share the results of those tests with you so that you know that your dog is healthy. Um, I think I read about a few other, you know, minor types of issues that could come up, but those were the, the two that I saw. Um, apparently because they are a rare breed, you do have to be 
um, cautious about people inbreeding them because mm. there's not a big stock. But when I was going through, I actually did find there's a breeder in Georgia. And then there were several throughout the United States, not a ton, I think less than, you know, the border terrier, but there oh, wow. were, there were, um, you know, I think Virginia, Washington, Arizona. So sprinkled through the United States, there were several, um, breeders on that list that you could check with and, you know, call them up and ask them questions. They'll, They'll be honest with you if this is the right breed for you. And remember that when you're seeking out a reputable breeder, you're not going to find a dog immediately. It's not like they have puppies just waiting to be sold to you. So bear that in mind. Um, but yeah, what a what a sweet dog. What a sweet little girl. She's a junior handler, so she shows dogs in the junior category. And um just a, a lovely little girl, lovely family. Yeah. And we were so pleased to meet them and to meet this breed. I was, I, I was geeking out. <laughs> she, she was. Well, uh, Megan, let's go ahead and tell people where they can find us and, uh, and how they can learn more about this particular breed and all other breeds that uh, we've uh, discussed. Yeah, well, before we do that, if you have a Legoto Romagnolo, please comment anything else we should know about this breed. We would love to get your feedback because, like we said, this is the first one we've ever met. So please give us your feedback in the comments. And um, also, if you don't have this breed but have a breed that you would like to talk about on the show, let us know. Maybe we'll interview you next. Um, but you can find us anywhere online at Dog Nerd Show. That goes for social media, uh, dognerdshow.com and dognerdshow at gmail.com. All right. Well, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.